good afternoon folks and welcome back welcome to another review today we're looking at MK Studios new payware version of Robin Yemi Airport in Finland Echo Foxtrot Romeo Oscar this is a significant release for many because it came out on the eve of the Fly and See Santa event that's run by VATS in Finland every year which I took part in today's Monday it's um, two days after the event the event went really well and I used the scenery so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the default scenery as it exists and it's perfectly acceptable, has everything you need, I'll talk to you about that. Then we're going to look at Tattoo Contemar's um, freeware version which he's created um, for FlightSim 2020. It's available on FlightSim.to. I'll put a link in the description below. I've also reviewed his version in another review video. That link is in the description below as well. Um, and his scenery significantly upgrades the default and it's, it's very acceptable. Um, much of it is created from his earlier versions in FSX and P3D. Um, some of it's guesswork and most of it uses the default FS models in Flight Sim 2020. But it still looks really good. Very impressed with it actually. Um, MK Studios kind of kept this quiet. I didn't really know. I, we'd heard that rumour that somebody was might have been doing a payware version, but they kind of kept this pretty quiet. And it was literally released um, to, on, on on the day or the day before the event on the Saturday. So as I said, the idea is to look at the default first, show you the layout of the land, local area as well, then look at um, Tattoo Cantamars and then have a look at this one, the payware, and see how it compares, certainly with the freeware. There are some things that are missing, some things that are not quite correct, um, but it will hopefully leave you to decide whether you want to buy this one or not. Um, quick disclaimer, I bought it, I paid for it, um, and it, I wasn't given it re to review, so as usual, all the comments are mine, they're all um, non-influenced by anybody or anything else. So thanks for joining me. As I said, we'll start with a look at the default scenery um, and then move on from there. So I'll see you in a minute. So to begin this review, we're going to have a look at the default Robinemi scenery as it appears in Flight Simulator 2020. You're looking at the apron, the main apron there, and you've got the main runway, runway 2103 to the left. Down here in the corner is where the um, GA hangar with the curved roof should be, but of course it's not simulated. And of course you've got the car parks. And then with the depot airport is fine, it's not bad at all. It's completely usable, certainly if you're flying online. Um, although quite a lot is missing from the apron area and behind the terminal. However, the area itself doesn't look too bad. I'm going to quickly show you... Uh, just quickly take some shots of the air above the airport here and then have a look at the city locally because uh, we will then look at um, Tartu Kantamar's version, freeware version for 2021 before having a proper look at the MK Studios new payware version. So there in the distance you can see they've still, they've modelled the uh, military air apron over there. There's the taxiway to the military apron. And obviously looking in the other direction you can see the remains of what was the uh, other runway. So let's go and have a look at the um, area, lo the local area, Santa Claus Village in the city. So if you, you can see we've got default areas that sort of serve to look like Santa Claus Village and the, uh, the local park. Very nice areas here that are well uh, light up, lit up but not well defined. And there directly ahead you can see the uh, ski slopes here and here. And also the bridge that crosses the Kamiokal River which goes into the city. And just very quickly, I wanted to show you if you've got the cable car mod from FlightSim.to installed, you can see he's included the um, ski runs and cable cars on this particular ski run. 
So just some views for you, showing you the layout of the land here and how it looks. This is the default scenery with Bing turned on. There you've got the airport to the upper right, because the river, the Kemijoko River below us. There's a park, a football stadium there. As you can see, the bridge is quite nicely defined there too. So coming further down to the city of Romiemi itself, there you can see the two bridges. The river continues all the way south. You can see the main highway going into the city. Now if I turn this way, you can see it's still pre it's pretty sparse, but it's still very acceptable. And there's a view looking back to the airport, and there's a main highway that goes through there. So there's a basic view of the default scenery of Romanyemi, the city, the local area and the airport itself. has everything you need, certainly for flying online, um, but that's the default. Let's have a look at the freeware scenery by Tatu Kantama of uh, Romanyemi for 2021, which is available on flightsim.to for those of you who are interested. Just want to show you the difference between the default and the... Um, the freeware and then we'll look and see how much better if any the MK Studios payware version is. Okay welcome back we're now looking at um, Tatu Kantanar's scenery of uh, Yemi 2021. This is a freeware version that's available on plightim.to um, I have reviewed this already as a video review up, which I will link in the description below for you, so you can have a closer in-depth look at that. That was obviously produced before um, the MK Studios version came out. Well, you can see the difference from the default. You've got um, a lot more detail. The terminal is nicely modelled. We'll get a close look in a minute. And you can see that down to the lower right here. Here's the, how the GA hangar with the special curved roof and uh, bits and pieces that uh, is there. The terminal area and the ramp, to be honest I really like the lighting here um, and you'll see the difference when we get the MK Studios version out. Um, the lighting in my opinion in this one looks a lot better on the ramp but that's just a personal opinion. So as you can see the runway is properly done and you've got the um, all the lighting you require. Um, the military apron has been um, updated as well. Quick look at that in a second. I want to show you here you've got wigwag lighting on the runway exits and approaches. They're also at both ends of the runway. And if I remember correctly the new payway exertion by MK Studios doesn't have that. So there's a military apron and you've got some vehicles there, some military vehicles as well. Um, you can Again, you can see more in my review of this product, which has been done in the other video. Again, the link's in the description below. Control tower and the fire station area looks quite nice there. And there you can see um, just an example of the um, airfield lighting in general. You've got the um, blue airfield boundary lights, the uh, taxiway and runway signage marks are good and the wigwags are very effective. Just a close look at the um, the ramp area here. As you can see it's nicely detailed. looks very real uh, and to be honest it's perfectly acceptable. If you're not interested in paying for a scenery this is a really really good alternative. The other end of the ramp there. You see you've got the moving people. And there you can see the front of the terminal looks nice. He's got the um, the glass um, front end effect looking really good. And there you've got the famous reindeer sign that sits behind the terminal. And there's a look across the land side. Again, it's okay. He's got the silage. Okay, it's fairly basic. You can see the entrances here. Um, and here's the car park. Got the flag poles, no flags on them unfortunately. So here's the GA hangar with the sloped roof. Um, it's got um, a special surface that uh, keeps the snow and ice off it and the whole inside of the hangar is heated uh, right the way through the winter. 
as we pan across here you can see pretty much the default Santa Village um, and the park bits and pieces here is still pretty much the default and again coming across the Kemiyoko River there you can see the stadium to the right So again you can see the ski lifts there on the ski run and here you can see not included in the original scenery are the two ski jumps. Rovaniemi has two big ski jumps just outside the city and uh, here um, you can see that Tartu has included them they weren't in the default. Now here's the bridge that we looked at earlier um, and it looks to be a bit double Let's just see if we can take a different different view of it. Yeah, there you go. <coughs> so he's placed the bridge, but it hasn't quite worked out position-wise. Um, I haven't tried removing the default um, Rovaniemi Airport. Not sure whether I can or not. Um, so I haven't tried that. Something we might want to look at. So going along the river here towards the city centre, something I did want to show you. Now in his notes, um, Tartu has mentioned that he has updated some landmarks and bits and pieces in the city. Now we're looking at the city here, you can see the bridge here, beautifully done. They did exist in the original default, but they've been upgraded here in Tartu scenery. So we take a quick run over the city here, and you can see it does look a little, a little bit more developed. He has added a few things. Um, the highway definitely looks better, Looks certainly looks better lit as we head further away from the airport. So you can see in Tartu's scenery there's a little bit more development, it just looks slightly better. Now it's this um, western side of the the city and the airport that um, still looks very green with very little lighting. As we get close to the airport and the runway there, you can see a little bit more development. The road's nicely done, road that goes up to the airport there. So we just have a close run down the runway and across the scenery here. And you can see, in terms of development, it really does upgrade the default significantly and looks very, very good, very close to the real thing. Flown into Rovignami many times and you can see it looks really quite good. And a quick view back of the airport there looking down runway 21. So there you go, there's a quick look at Tartu <coughs> excuse me there's a quick look at Tartu Cantamar scenery for 2021 the freeware version of Rominemi which significantly upgrades the default, makes it look better. One or two little issues here and there, like the bridges, but um, he's included the ski jumps, which are missing from the original default, and significantly upgrades the terminal, parking stands, and the lighting everywhere looks really good. As I said, I've already reviewed this airport. Um, I'll put the link in the description below if you want to see the video on that and have a get, get a closer look at what um, what exists here. Um, but now let's have a look at MK Studio's payware version and compare it with this one and the default. So welcome back folks. So you've had a chance there to look at the default scenery and um, Tattoo Cantamar's um, freeware upgrade which I think is really good um, and quite significant really. We were, for many of us, were waiting for, for something decent for flights in 2020, and that came out. So now we're looking at um, MK Studios' payware version. It's just after 12 midday. What I've done is I've set um, <coughs> 12 midday, no snow, it's not live weather, just to give you a look at the airport itself as it exists, and then what I will do is I will then go on to live weather um, 
or at least um, try and get to a situation where you can see it in the snow, which is what it looks like. Most of the flights get in here in the mid-afternoon or, or late afternoon. And of course, this far north, it gets dark pretty quickly. So I want to try and show you what it looks like in real weather conditions. So the scene is a row in Yemi, Heco Foxtrot Romeo Oscar by MK Studios. The download is 936.8 meg and it installs into your community folder at 1.18 gigabytes, just short of 1.2 gigs. It's available directly through Orbix, Orbix simulation systems only. Hasn't uh, appeared yet on Sim Market, not sure if it will. And the price currently 15 euros and 13 cents or $17.08 US or £12.88 UK and you need to add tax and VAT to those prices depending on your country of purchase. So I'll quickly run through some history. Rovaniemi Airport is the third busiest airport in Finland. It's located close to the town of the same name about 6 miles or 10 kilometres north of the city, centre of the city of Rovaniemi. The northern end of the runway, nor that's runway 21 threshold, <coughs> is actually crossed or bisected by the Arctic Circle. The airport was built in 1940, initially with two grass surface runways. You can see the remains of the other one that knows no longer use here. At one point it served as an air base and supply centre for the German Luftwaffe. These days the airport is popular holiday arrival point for tourists coming to see Santa Claus. In 2017, the airport handled close to 580,000 passengers, with much seasonal charter traffic from Great Britain and other European countries. The seasonal time runs from the middle of November until the middle of January. The Russians arrive in January because, being Orthodox Christians, they celebrate Christmas later in January and not in December as we do in the West. In addition to routine civilian traffic, the airport is used by the F-18 fighter interceptors of the Lapland Air Command. The air unit of the Rovaniemi Frontier Guard of Lapland is also located nearby. General aviation operators and private pilot owners are served by the provision of a dedicated fully enclosed and heated hangar with a, cons with a curved snow shedding roof located near the terminal complex and we'll look at that during this review. Rovaniemi Airport is one of three airports in Finland that has jet bridges, the other two being Helsinki and Oulu and it's managed by Finavia. It's also connected to the Rovaniemi city centre by airport taxi service and there's also multiple bus connections around Lapland including the major spin winter sports centres. Rovaniemi airport is the third busiest airport in Finland after Helsinki and Oulu. Santa Claus village and Santa Park are situated with 1 to 2 miles away or 2.2 to 3 kilometres of the airport. The airport's located just over sort of five miles away from the city centre, meaning it's not too far away from rest for restaurants and hotels. Busiest time for the airport is the Christmas season, when many people go on to see Santa. The airport is served by over 15 airlines, including Finnair, EasyJet, Transavia and TUI. In 2019, before COVID, the airport handled 661,124 passengers. Rovaniemi endures a significant snow season from late October through to late April, but the airport has a huge fleet of vehicles and equipment to deal with the weather and the runway is rarely closed to traffic. The airport fleet uses biofuel and other renewable sources of power for energy consumption and is working towards going carbon, carbon neutral. So the runway, runway 2103 is 9,849 feet or 3,002 meters long and is made of asphalt and lies at an elevation of 643, 643 feet or 196 meters. Runway 21 is equipped with high intensity airfield lighting system version 2, centerline lighting, touchdown zone lighting and precision approach path indicators. It also has an ILS certified for Category 2 landings. Runway 03 has all of the above except the touchdown zone lighting. But it doesn't have an ILS, instead it has an RMP or VRR only approach. 
and as I said no ILS or touchdown zone facilities. What you can see here as we look at the threshold of runway 03 it's got the high intensity airfield lighting system version 1 it doesn't have the strobes included um, which it should so that's missing from the scenery. The precision approach path indicators on the left are there and so is the center line. So here we are looking at the uh, runway 21. As you can see, it has the high intensity airfield lighting system, but again, it only has version 1, no strobes. Version 2 has the strobes that go in on the lead in lights here. But you can see it does have the touchdown zone lighting, the precision approach bath, and the centerline lighting as per the charts. So both ends of the runway are missing high intensity airfield lighting version 2. But as ever, if you can see from above there, you've got plenty of ground lighting. The taxiways are lit by centerline lighting and the blue airfield edge lights, they denote the um, boundary of the airfield. And here you can see the touchdown zone lights on uh, runway 21. So let's get a quick close up look um, at the terminal area and the ramp and see what it looks like. So here's a quick shot of the um, of the ramp area, and as you can see, at this time of the day, um, it looks fine. The building, for me, those lights are really the the building lights are far too bright. It looks just white, and it just doesn't look right. Um, the ramp area is lit; it's adequately lit, but in my opinion, again, it's not lit as well as the freeware version. You may disagree. I don't know. It depends. What I'm going to do is change the uh, the time of day to have a look at the um, the building and see if the lighting changes. So let's just change the time of day and see if that bright light gets any better. Right, so it's now five past one in the afternoon um, local time or five past eleven UK time. Roving Emmy is past two hours. Um, that's about the best I can get it. It's still, to me, it still looks too bright. Um, I think the um, the freeware version has it better. If I bring the lighting up further, the daytime up further, it goes back to fully bright. And there you can see if I take the time back, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it goes completely dark. So there's no sort of intermittent lighting, pretty much everything gets turned off. So back to midday UTC or 2 o'clock in the afternoon local time and um, we've got the lighting back where it was. Let's have a little closer look at the terminal. As you can see the stands look quite nice, the detail looks okay. There is work done inside the terminal, we'll look at that in a minute. It looks fine, looks very acceptable. And here we're moving across to the GA hangar. Um, in real life it's blue on the top and on the side, we can't see the colour. Um, in fact, I don't think the colour's been done such. So there you've got the front of the GEO hangar, complete with lights. And uh, to be honest, it looks perfectly fine. don't see a problem at all. Looks very acceptable, no problems at all. There you can see one of the snow vehicles down here. So we're just going to track land side of the terminal. Again, you've got these floating orbs, which are a feature of pretty much every um, Flight Sim 2020 scenery. A few cars in a car park there. And you can see you've got the entrances to the uh, Christmas trees to the building. There's the signage on the left, and there's the famous um, reindeers on the right. Everything looks fine, neat and tidy. Cars look okay here. Actually, we're going to have a close look at some of the cars because there are some problems with some of the models, unfortunately. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. Um, the vehicle models aren't that brilliant. <coughs> they're pretty basic, but they're not as good as I've seen in some of the other sceneries. They're acceptable, but um, when you're talking the, of a scenery that you're actually paying for, you really kind of expect a higher quality, and they're not that brilliant. So we're just going to track back along the um, land side area, because again I want to show you a few things.
no real problems it all looks okay um, it looks quite nice it still looks a little sparse really I don't know I got a feeling maybe they could have done more I'm not sure but at least you've got a guy there with his car but again see the quality of the models here really is <laughs> it's pretty dreadful I'm afraid they're just really not up to spec for a payware scenery I'd expect a lot better that's looking better but again the car models outside are low quality but the building looks okay looks nice the lighting's good as we go land side across the terminal there got a couple of animated people and the entrances there look quite nice um, again these are missing from the freeware but um, have been added to this one but here once again the quality of the cars vehicles pretty dreadful considering that even doesn't have any wheels I just uh, when you look at this part it looks like the scenery isn't finished it's a bit unbaked It just looks like it's not been completed. It, there's more work really to refine this scenery. Product really could be a lot better. Fence line's good. Fence line's very nice there. Looks really good. Sits in the foliage pretty well. So we head back to the airside ramp. Just a little bit of scenery popping there. We'll have a look at some of the equipment and the stands. Tarmac looks good. Looks very good actually. Again, these buildings look very blocky. They just. Uh, it just doesn't look finished. Maybe it's me, I don't know. That unfortunately is a bug where you've got default scenery interacting with this scenery and you've got the cargo tug there going through that building. You can see inside the terminal, which is nice, and they've got the Rovaniemi sign, which is correct. And these jetways look fine. Again, nothing to write home about, they just look fine. Stand signage is good, and you've got some airport clutter sitting there. And to be honest, <laughs> these, these look a lot better than the cars out the land side. Just my opinion, though. So let's hop inside the terminal and see what they've done. So here's a view looking towards a restaurant, Roman Emmy Cafe, it's been very nicely done. Not going to find too much to complain about inside here because they've done a nice job. And they're just looking down that corridor and you can see out through the sort of semi-translucent glass, Roman Emmy sign there. Decorations are hung, it's Christmas. And looking down on the uh, check-in desk there on Departures Hall. Got the rent a car offices there. Quite acceptable. Pictures are low resolution, which is a pity. Could have been done higher. But they it it's fine, it works. Nice job with the check-in desks. Look okay there. But again, just I get a feeling it's all pretty minimal. So back airside again, this is gate three. As you can see, you've got the desks where the people stand. The signage here and here is very crisp, which is good. Real pity that the signage on the um, rental car desks just isn't as clear. Nice to have the departures board there, but again, the signage is not terribly crisp, crisp and clear, and I'm not actually that close to it. Um, it doesn't get any better if I pull away from it. Duty free shops. Again, you've got um, basically a photographic facade, which is nice, but um, they're not lit. It looks like it's closed. It looks like all these shops are closed. Really, um, 
it all looks a bit like a half-baked job. The inside is is really nice. They've done a lovely job showing the inside, and um, I'm very happy with that. Generally, very pleased with the results. But as you can see, there are little anomalies that spoil it. Shops are closed when it should be open. The signage is not terribly clear, and even the photographic um, description here is really not terribly clear either. But nice to have the clocks. There's the security desks, which is great. See, I find this really strange. I mean, the security point here is really nicely done. The x-ray machines have all the detail on them, right down to the buttons. I know these well because this used to be my job. <coughs> I think this is the first scenery where I've actually seen an archway metal detector properly done and lit. And an x-ray machine that has the... Um, the name on it and has the warning signs and the function lights and the roller beds so they've really gone to town a little bit more on the on the security check area here and these signs are all nicely lit and yet some of these others here are just not done I don't, I'm afraid I don't, don't get it really but the security check looks fantastic could do with some people but I'm not going to go mad it, it, it looks great now here we are outside gate 5 okay again the photograph is low resolution doesn't really give the right illusion but it's lit it looks like it's open and so does the others down here so this um <laughs> not quite sure really it, it, it you know the others should be the same however once again check-in desks and everything nice and clear so shops are open that's a nice touch. So this is the arrivals area. Got the carousels, but you've got no baggage inlets. So, again, it's like a, a job half done. And looking in the other direction, you've got the baggage trolleys there. It's really nice. That's what I can say. It is really nice. It's always nice when a scenery developer goes to the lengths to create the inside interior of a terminal and it looks good. What puts me off is the fact that certainly in this case it's only half done. The um, photographic inlays for the shops and stuff and the um, car rental desk land site are all low resolution and they don't look really very effective at all. It should be much higher, should be better pictures. And again some of these airside duty free shops they, they look closed. Here we are in the baggage hall. Yep, we've got the conveyors. The conveyors look half good, pretty good, reasonably good actually. But there's no baggage entry point. Um, again, it's an unfinished point. It's an unfinished area of the airport. They've attempted it, started it, but not completed it. However, on the plus side, the inside lighting looks good. Everything's lit the way it should. The lights in the ceiling light up the area correctly. There's no unseemly unsourced lighting here which is good news and here inside the arrival hall at the other wall you've got some seating and some vending machines so here we are looking at the security check from the land side point once again the details excellent on the security point they've done everything everything right down to the casters these um roller beds can be detached and moved around on many of these machines they look like siemens machines um, and they're all equipped with these um, things that can be replaced and they, that looks great and again you've got signs advert signs above that are well lit and you've got shops which are kind of half baked half lit low resolution photographs that don't really give the illusion even from further away which is a pity to be honest I can't see where the entrances are what we'll do in a minute is pop land side of the building and see where the entrances are. So here's the arrivals hall. And what we're going to do is going to pop right through this entrance and see where we end up. I've got a feeling that we're going to go into the arrivals hall and go right through a shop. But let's see. So we turn around here. And yes, there you are. We've got a shop there. No entrance. The entrance should go right through. I go back out again. 
If I stop here... You can see you've got this kind of no man's land here between the entrance and the land side interior of the terminal which is to the right there if I just spin round. You can see you've got this kind of invisible wall. There's the security check we just looked at and right here in front of us is a facade of a shop. So okay this probably is the the um, area of the shop that it would have if it had some depth. But as you can see both here where we've come in and the other entrance there again you've got shops in front there's no entrance going through so that's a bit weird <laughs> so we're out landside again and you can see the cars parked out the terminal here it almost has no wheels these models really could have done been done much better flags are nice acceptable Again, you've got the flagpoles that we had in the freeware scenery that had nothing on them, and here they put the flags on, which is a nice touch. Signage, land side of the airport, looks good, road signs. Ignore the floating bulbs. And the Rovaniemi reindeer look good as well. They're, again, they're in the right place. So again, just looking across from land side, perfectly acceptable. Um, and it looks okay. Let's just pan from land side to air side and have a last look across the terminal point. Yep, there you go. It's perfectly acceptable. And again, you have the um, green centerline taxiway lighting. Runway lighting is good. Here you can see the entry signs to runway 03. This is Alpha. Um, and the wigwags are missing, so he's not decided. They've not decided to include the wigwags, which is a pity. Though I thought they were quite good. Now, just last look down the runway. As you can see, all the ground lighting is there where you need them. So let's go and have a look at the Santa Village and the city. See what they've done. So here we are at Santa's Village. As you can see, they've added some buildings and some bits and pieces. Very nice touch. Trees look good. Petrol station there. We've still got the same issues with the vehicles, although they do seem a little better here. I'm not sure. Maybe because it's the way they're placed. But you've got a nice little hotel in there. Sign is just pleasant. There's Santa's, a couple of Santas sitting around. All looks very pleasant. Very pleasant. Nicely done. Looks nice. Just it looks quite nice. The lighting's a bit suspect. As you can see, you've got lighting in parts of it, but not in other parts. This is a bit dark. Car park is really dark. And looking here at the other part of the village that's not very well lit. But it's cute. It's very quaint. Very nice. But again... I get the feeling it's not finished, not completed. So there, just to the lower left, you can see here the road that goes into the airport. Now we're going towards the ski jump and the bridges and the uh, Kamiokil River. <coughs> Much of this is default. We'll see what's been, if anything's been added. Very nice, everything's still there. So the ski jump is missing. Whatever they've done, they've overlaid the ski jump and that's missing, which is a pity. So the bridge is default. Oh, you've got cars going underneath it, which is a pity. Not sure if that's an Osobo problem, probably is. So let's just have a little look down the So that looks nice and quaint. 
Again, not sure if this has been done by the MK or whether it's a Sobo. Don't remember seeing this. Very quaint. I think this is probably default. So we're on the river again, back to the bridge. So they've added the span on the bridge, but it's not lit up. So let's change the lighting to darkness and see if it lights up. Right, so here we are. This is the dark of night, pretty much. Cars are going under the bridge across the water, and again, of course, the bridge is not lit, which is a real pity, nor is the other bridge there. So with the MK Studios, you lose the lighting on the bridges, which is in the freeware. In my opinion, the freeware beats it. So there we go, I'll just switch the um, timing back to midday UK time or 2 o'clock local time just to get the sort of sunset effect back again. Bridge is still not lit and you've still got vehicles going underneath. So there's the city of Roman Yemi itself, bathed in sunset sunlight. <coughs> it's it's a very pleasant place to be um, in the summer or in it looks it looks beautiful as well. Got your bridges. It's um lovely very nice landscape now here you can see the lighting is better on the roads not really sure why I'm pretty sure MK Studios didn't do this um, but it's interesting to note when you go from the default to the freeware to the payware and sort of switch back again which I spent an hour and a half or so yesterday doing to get familiar with all of this it's interesting how the lighting seems to vary and although for us pilots it's the airport we concentrate on, um, the features of the local area are interesting to see and um, it's nice when they're available and they're made to look really nice. Um, case in point are the light lit up bridges in the freeware and it's not so nice when they're jumped on or flattened by a new scenery product such as this. Ski jumps are missing and there's no lighting on the bridges. But the roads do look better not sure why that is however so just tracking back towards the airport as you can see the western side of the field is for dark forest as we expected as we saw before there's the road to the right this goes down here and then comes into the airport And there you get a good lay, a good idea of the layout of the airport and the scenery and how it fits. So there you go. <clears throat> That's an overview of the payware scenery, the airport, the building and the local area in the city. What I want to do now is try and engage real weather, put some snow on the ground and let you have a look at what it looks like at the time most of the flights go in or certainly that's what it looked like last night when I flew in so here you are this is live weather today and I'll put the meter up so you can have a look let's get closer on the ground and see what we can see okay so we've got a little bit of snow on the ground and as you can see taxiway lighting edge lights are still there signage is good most of the stand markings apart from this taxiway line here most of the stand markings are, are pretty much visible they're not lit but they're visible there's an example you can see the uh, center line there taxiway center line is visible again the building for me the building looks far too bright it's just my opinion it just doesn't look right but however but the ground lighting these stanchions are actually producing the right amount of light and actually lighting up the right area which is good it's one of the good things I like about sceneries and there you go looking towards the threshold of 03 and here we are again looking at the hangar uh, the heated hangar and the lighting's okay you see you've got these lights mounted on the side of the buildings and again they're lighting up the area correctly but the buildings themselves look really dark so we just go across towards landside across the fence 
Car park here. Looks nice in the snow. Yep, no problems there at all. Let's have a look at the control tower. Again there you can see the airside land side boundary fence. So here's the control tower building. Don't think there's anything inside. No, they've got windows but they actually block what's outside so there you go. Again we've got these cars that really don't do justice to the product. That really just looks like it's been cut out. That's really not very acceptable for a payware product. By contrast, this one looks better. Okay, again, it literally looks like a photograph, but it's, it's much, much better. And we've got a jet there as well. Again, not the greatest models. The models really aren't the best. But there's a huge, seems, certainly seems to be a huge variation in the quality of the models on the airfield. There again, you've got a much better model. You can even see all of the wheels and the studs where they where you put the trailer down. Um, and you remember the cars that were land side of the terminal who didn't even have wheel bottoms. So here we've got helicopters. Another jet there. Snow machine. Um, looks the model looks fine. It's looking like it's off the ground a bit there. Maybe me, I don't know. Jet looks nice. I just wanted to have a closer look at the helicopters. These models are nice. Again, they're complete. There's no evidence of photographic cutouts. I think it's a Black Hawk. Okay, it's missing the windows and the interior, but the model itself is sound, and it's sitting on the ground quite nicely. And by contrast, we're back on the landside car park, um, landside of that military area, and we've got the same ridiculously dreadful car models. Really don't understand why there's such a diverse range of quality. I mean, this is dreadful. Look. So there you go, folks. Um, it's not quite... Um, as bad as it was when I flew in here on Saturday night, Saturday night visibility was quite um, was pretty low. <coughs> I saw the runway at about 200 feet, or a little under 200 feet. wasn't exactly a Category 2 landing, but it was close. Um, but it was fine, it was acceptable. So just very quickly, I brought it back to um, sort of mid-morning, 11 a.m., same weather conditions. As you can see the terminal now, the lighting has gone out. Um, and the terminal looks reasonably close to reality. The other thing to note here is the taxiway um, is partially obliterated when you get the snow. Um, but you can just see the green taxiway lines and you can just see the blue edge lights. So you should be okay taxiing. So here the terminal looks better. Um, you can see inside through the windows and actually the colouring looks better even in the, in the sort of twilight caused by the uh, the sunset. And again the problem there, look, you've got the um, reindeer sign is not lit. Which is a pity. You get to a certain point here and the, sun, and the lighting just goes off and it just changes the whole look of it. So before we wrap this up I just want to have a look at um, this airport in the summertime where the snow has gone, normal weather, and let's see what it looks like. So here we are in July, uh, around about midday, late morning. You can see the um, ground signage is a lot better here now, it becomes a lot more defined, the stand numbers are more defined. There you can see the remains of the other cross runway here. 
that used to be there. There's the military apron. And looking down towards the threshold of 03 in the foreground here, you can see the VOR station just here. So just a quick pan across airside. This airport looks a lot better in the summertime in this kind of lighting conditions. That building looks much more accurate in terms of colour. Again, the um, reindeer sign should be lit. It's a, it's a bright sign pretty much all the time. But again, it's dark in here in the scenery. So this is better. Here's the GA hangar. It's not the right colour blue. The blue it should be lighter than that, but that's okay. At least they've got it done. And there we are looking out towards the city. Here's the threshold of 03. Here's the airport runway that goes out to the highway, which goes all the way down into town. Bridges there. Ski jumps are here. And there we're looking at Santa's village. And there we are looking back across the airport. So there you go, let's go back to real weather and I'll talk about my thoughts. Okay, so here we are, 13th of December, uh, Monday, 14.42 Zulu, which is 16.42 local time in the afternoon here in the north of Rovinemi. As I said, this is MK Studios version, the payware version of Rovinemi. Price, okay, it's 15, little over 15 euros, a um, little over 17 dollars US and just under 13 pounds UK. Um, and again, you've got to add tax or VAT to those prices. My thoughts, do I think it's worth it? I think it's worth the price. Um, if it had been any more, I'd have um, kind of bolted at it, I think. Um, let's look at the good things first. Um, the terminal interior is nicely detailed. They've um, attempted to do it, which is it's going to please a lot of people. The lighting on the ramp is excellent. It's just what you need. Centerline lighting, blue boundary edge lights, so you should have no problem finding a way around on the ramp. Um, it's nice to see that they've done some work on the Santa village. It looks very cute, very quaint. They've also done work on the military apron, which looks good. The helicopters are excellent. Um, and um, I'm not sure whether they've done anything really in terms of the city of Rovaniemi. But um, the whole area is really nice and thoroughly worth exploring. And this is a nice scenery. Um, don't get me wrong, it's a nice scenery. I, I like it. I, I find it very pleasant. It's eminently acceptable. If there was nothing else, it certainly beats the default. So now the cons. What do I think's wrong? Okay, um, my impression is it's not finished. Okay, they've done the interior, but they've left so many things undone. For example, you've got duty-free shops on, and the um, the facades for the uh, car rental agencies. All of those shop things. The, the images are low resolution. They should be a lot higher to look better. I wasn't looking at them that close up and they look pretty... Um, and they look really low resolution for Im images. The far facade doesn't really work that well. And some of them are dark, which indicates like the shop is closed. That's really weird. Um, amazing to see the security area done in such detail and yet the rest of the interior um, so much is missing. The advert signs are bright, well lit, easy to read um, and nicely detailed. And then coming into the terminal through the um, entrances, which are great. It's great that they've actually built the entrances from landside into the terminal. You come into this no man's land where there's nothing there. And to get into the terminal um, uh, area, you actually go through a shop. And that unfortunately doesn't work. But okay, I mean, those are nitpickings for people that are looking at the inside of the terminal. At the end of the day, we're pilots. We're going to be flying in here. What matters are the approach aids, navigation aids, getting around the airport and parking. Okay, the one mistake they've made, like many, other, quite a few other developers have made, there are two types of high-intensity airfield lighting system. Version 1 and version 2 has the lead-in strobes. 
Um, looked at the charts of Robinyemi and they have version 2 with the lead-in strobes. That's missing from this scenery like it's missing from many other sceneries. However, the rest of the runway is correct. Uh, runway 2 one, the main one with the ILS, is um, properly equipped. It has pappies, has the touchdown zone lighting, and the ILS works, I know, because I used it and flew in the other day. Zero three 3 has an RMP or VOR approach, no ILS, and no touchdown zone lighting, but it does have pappies and centerline, and uh, again, that's correct in the scenery, although it too is missing the high-intensity lighting system version 2. Um, the ramp lighting looks good, and the jetways work. All looks perfectly acceptable, but I have to say I prefer the freeware terminal area, the way it looks. I think the ramp lighting looks better, and the glow from the terminal, the way it looks, and the colouring, um, to be honest, looks better in the freeware. Also, the um, GA hanger there that's sloped to prevent snow piling up on the roof and it's heated inside. In the freeway version the colour is correct and the bits and pieces nearby look better. Um, in this payway version it, um, it just looks a little incomplete. The buildings are, are, are black. Uh, there hasn't been an awful lot of attempt at really getting the, the lighting right on the many buildings that they've, they've put in. And the other big standout problem are the, are the, are the models. The car models in the car park land side of the scenery, what I've shown you, I mean, they're dreadful. They <laughs> really are pretty dreadful. By contrast, you've got um, a freight truck in the military area that looks really good, that looks um, so much better than the others. So, what do I think overall? Okay, um, I th personally think that um, this payware scenery is no better than the freeware. I think they're about the same. Okay, so you get the Santa Village and you get the inside of the terminal and a few bits and pieces added which um, enhance this scenery and that's why um, I still rate it as being a good scenery and I still am happy with the price because of the work that's been done. That said, I think the freeware version is slightly better. Um, and this payware version could be a really good product, but it's not complete. I would like to see work done on the problems that exist inside the terminal. If you're going to do the interior of the terminal, do a decent job. You've really got to look at the, the likes of Pyro Dev Company, who have done Borisville and Odessa and Lviv, and look at the quality of the inside of the terminal. That's the sort of quality you really want to see. I mean, I'd pay 20 euros for that. That really, really needs to be improved inside the terminal. Um, the general ambience of the airport I don't think has been achieved. Certainly not as well as the freeware. They're probably about the same. So as a pilot, flying in there, if you wanted scenery um, decent enough for you, for you to enjoy a flight going into Robinyemi for the Christmas event every year, the freeware works fine. In fact, it's excellent. And the payware works fine as well too. Um, except that um, arguably you probably wouldn't want to pay the money because the freeware one is more than acceptable. So MK Studios have done a nice job but unfortunately it's not complete. I think it's been rushed out. I think it's been rushed out in time for the event that happened last Saturday. I would like to see somebody go back to work on this product and change and update it, improve it because they certainly could. The local area is beautiful. Um, they've done a lot, quite as they've done a lot, and the area itself is um, is just one of those wonderful places to fly into, winter or summer. Certainly in the winter. But they need to look at photographs of the terminal, get the colouring right, um, and they need to revisit the inside of the terminal, and they need to dump these models, and um, put better ones in place, ones that really reflect the quality of what they're trying to do. So that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments. You may disagree, disagree totally. Um, but there you go. I think the price, as I said, the price is okay. You're looking at um, 12, just under £13 UK, just over $17 US, and just over €15, Euros plus tax and VAT, um, for this payware product. 
So this is Lee saying, uh, virtual airline pilot, saying thank you very much for joining me um, and for listening to my um, inane dribble. <laughs> um, I hope it's helped. I hope you've had a chance to look at this and see what I've seen. Very happy if you disagree with me. Um, I'm not casting any aspersions on MK Studios. They're a good developer, particularly like their Porto scenery. Um, and um, Keflavik was a good scenery after the updates did a, one, a really good job on that but unfortunately I think this has been rushed out and there's more to do so thanks again for joining me I'll wrap this up and um, say thank you very much for looking at this review happy to talk to you in the comments below and uh, let me know what you think I will see you in the next video thank you very much have a great Christmas um, thank you to all my subscribers and the people who have supported my channel um, Hugs and kids and, and things going out to you guys and the ladies if there are any. Have a great Christmas. Have a happy new year. I really hope it works for you. Take care and bye for now.